Hi, my name is Christy McAllister and welcome to the first episode of the Women's Rugby League Show, a new series where we cover this amazing sport and the inspirational women who play it. We're here today at St Helens for the media launch ahead of the new season of the Women's Super League, where they're going to be in with a chance of winning this, Betfred's new Super League trophy. Coming up, we speak to Challenge Cup winners Geordie Cunningham and Ebony Partington. I feel like I've been hit by a bus today, I don't know about you. Five times. We also catch up with losing finalist Kira Bennett of Leeds Rhinos. It's going to be hard for the coaching staff to put out a 13 each week because of the talent and the hardworking girls in the squad. And we speak to York's Tamsin Renouf and the Wigan pair Georgia Wilson and Rachel Thompson. So the Women's Super League started in 2017 where Bradford Bulls took the title. 2018 we had Wigan Warriors, 2019 was the Leeds Rhinos, 2020 obviously we know what happened there and in 2021 Saints took the treble. So they've already got the Challenge Cup under their belt this year so far but the question is will they win this? Let's find out how they think they're going to get on. In 2022 Women's Challenge Cup final, Bennett. Looks at her options, finds Georgia Roach. Again, great Roach running off front loads. Oh, there's a great coming through from Holtby for Leach. She's got Rotherham to beat. Great defence coming in. Oh, she's got it. over. Holtby gets the first try of the Challenge Cup final 2022. And it goes to Leach Rhinos. Heck over the top, into space is Leah Burke. Sends her in. Leah Burke wins the try. And that's not fair off half time for making it bringing St Helens back to within two points of lead and St Helens needed that try. Oh. Emma Lundley taking that ball in for the Rhinos. Crowell just apologises as she moves away from that tackle. Big moment. Strikes it cleanly by the look. Oh yes! Yeah, great hit. Look what it means to them there. They're all running over. What can Saints do on the last? Stopped. Little kick through. Taken. Oh, he's gone loose. And it looks like St. Helens might have capitalised on that. Again, I think we're going to be going to the video referee. And the ball is loose. And then the ball is grounded by St. Helens. So the try is given. After the look by the video referee to Ebony Partington. Here's Cunningham once more. Cunningham, Cunningham goes! Cunningham's in! Is that the try? Is that the crucial try? Still time to go in this game, but what a huge start from Johnny Cunningham. You know, from one chance at the other end of the field, a missed kick there to take the game to 10-8. Blink your eyes a moments later, Jordy Cunningham, no line speed, sees the gap, steps off a left foot. What a moment, what a try, what a player. Hey, Stott once more, Stott finds Cunningham, who's got support from Hardcastle. She looks to try and get that ball away to Partington, is that down? I think it is. The referee checks with his touch judge, they're happy. He's there. Partington scores, the work done by Amy Hardcastle, and that will be the try that means St Helens hang on to the Challenge Cup in 2022. And there we are again, St Helens return the trophy, Women's Challenge Cup champions 2022. Girls, absolutely great final. Have you recovered yet? No, <laughs> your voice hasn't. I'm not on this voice. <laughs> oh. Is that yeah. from the game or from the celebrations afterwards? Oh, I think I was shouting <laughs> in the game and the celebrations. Yeah, I feel like I've been hit by a bus today. I don't know about you. Five times. All the adrenaline and alcohol has now worn off. <laughs> and now all I can feel is pain. <laughs> so it was an absolutely epic match. Did you have any nerves prior to the game? I did. You did? I 100% did. Yeah. It was, it was the first time, like, a final or anything like that, so I was nervous. Like, I don't even know how I... I thought, first ball that comes to me, I'm going to drop it. That's what I'm nervous <laughs> I was. 
No, I always had full confidence in UMS. Yeah, I, I mean, I always get really nervous before a game, uh, especially a big game like that. I think the stadium and the occasion, like, you can't help but not. I do try and hide it probably a little bit more, like, especially with some of the younger girls. I'm one of the oldest. So for some of the younger girls, I don't want to look like a nervous wreck because I think oh, they'll probably look at me and think, oh, my God. So, yeah, I try and hide it a little bit, but you can't help but get nervous and stuff like that. So Leeds played amazingly as well. What did you think when they got the first try? Were you disheartened? Can't swear, can we? But <laughs> we were probably like, oh no, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't part of the plan. Um, but I, I don't think we panicked. I think no. we've scored so many points this year. Um, we've got try scorers across the field. And I think I just always felt confident that somebody would come up with something. Luckily, Ebbs did. <laughs> so <laughs> she, she managed to pull us out the bag twice. But um, we're not used to going behind, are we? Like, we've not had to come from pressure, behind. We've not had that pressure, have we? No. Especially like. In defence, we've not defensively had the pressure that we got. So Jodie, you obviously got the try that put you in the lead. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You wouldn't believe the grief I've had so far this season about not scoring, right? <laughs> because we, I don't know, we would scored before that final something like 320 points. I don't know why, it was a lot of points before that final. And I hadn't scored yet, right? And every time I walked into work, every time like I got to training, like the me, Jamie, a media manager, he was always like, scored yet? I'm like, no, I'm not scored yet. I don't need to score. I was like, look, when I need to score, I'll score. Obviously just trying to tell myself that. <laughs> but then it actually happened. So yeah, obviously it was really tense. It was really close. I was screaming at TJ for the ball and was like, give me this, I want it. A bit of a late retreat defender and thought, right, I need to go over the top of her. So yeah, luckily got the ball down and got the try. The it was relief. I don't even think it was happiness, was it? We were just like, oh my God, thank you. I'm good for that. So yeah, it was, it felt good. Amazing. So. Jordi obviously started it off and the final try was from Ebony, so how did you feel about that? How was that moment for you? Um, good. Yeah, it was really good. I feel like, I don't know, like I've not, I've not scored much really, have I? So to score then was like, oh gosh, this is what I've been training for, but it was really nice. I thought I was new, like the ball was coming and I don't know, I didn't expect the ball because Amy had been taking it in and then the gap just opened up because she's sharp and I was like, give me the ball. It was just good. Um, so how does it feel to have won the first major honour of the season? I think it takes the pressure off us a little bit. Like, obviously, we never won a trophy before last year. Everyone, can, I swear no one wants us to win anything anymore because we did the treble last year. Everyone's always supporting everybody else. Um, but it was the first trophy we ever won last year. So I know we went and did the treble, which was amazing. And, you know, so proud of the girls for doing that. But it's not like we, we've won loads of trophies. It's just we won loads last year. So for us, I think... Uh, probably everybody was, was back in Leeds, really, yeah. and probably wanted an underdog to win it. So for us, it took the pressure off a little bit that we've you know defended one of our trophies now and we can fully focus on the Women's Super League and you know hopefully backing it up again. No one might want us to do the treble, but we're going to do everything we can out there. It. Anyway, it's going to be really tough. Everyone else has raised their game. Basically, we've got a big target on our back now. Last year, because we'd never won out before, everyone knew, I think, we had a good squad and we had a good chance of, of winning some silverware, but... I think now we've done it, we're now the team to beat, so everyone's doing the very best to, yeah. to take the trophies off us now. And one team who will be doing their best to try and beat Saints are Leeds Rhinos. They were unlucky in the Challenge Cup final, but they go into the new season full of optimism. I spoke with Kira Bennett for the lowdown on Leeds. Hi Kira, great to meet you. Um, obviously, Challenge Cup at the weekend didn't end the best in defeat, but obviously you played absolutely brilliantly. How are you feeling after the game? Um, yeah, it was it was a disappointing like end result, but definitely a lot to take from the game. Um, and I'm very proud of my team and and how we just kept fighting. Um, and yeah, it was really good. So, how much confidence can you take from that match into the new season? Yeah, well, it definitely put us in good stead for the season ahead. Um, being early and things, we've learned a lot about ourselves. Um, we came up against a good side against St Helens, um, who were the team to beat. And I think we've definitely we executed things we wanted to execute, and we've learned a lot about ourselves and and things that we want to improve on, definitely. But it's going to be good in in a bit of realization of what we've got to do to push on now, and hopefully be lifting the grand final at the end of the year. So, in your team and across the league, who would you say your favourite players are and the ones to watch for the upcoming season? Well, this year we have we have a very strong team, um, and I guess it's going to be hard for the coaching staff to put out a 13 each week because of the talent and the hard-working girls in the squad. But some definite um, new additions like Georgia Roach, 
um, Emma Lumley. They're some of the great players and Hannah Butcher and Courtney Winfield, outstanding. But yeah, it's going to be good and they definitely bring so much to the team. They're such characters and, and bring a level that we need as a team to go forward. So Kira, what are your targets for the rest of this season? I just want to go out there with my teammates, have fun and um, I want to win. <laughs> I do want to win this year. We're looking towards the league leaders now in the grand final um, after obviously missing out on the Challenge Cup. But I'm excited to go out there each week and, and push on and, and learn more about ourselves and put in some grit and determination. So there's a big hype around this season, especially with regards to women. How do you think the season's going to pan out with regards to support and getting the fans behind? Um, it's definitely a big year for Women's Super League, um, especially with the World Cup at the end of the year. There's a lot more media coverage even today here. Um, we wouldn't have had this a couple of years back. And the stadiums we're playing on now, it's, it's exceptional and only like what you dream of. So come the end of the year, it's going to be really good. So hopefully the fans do get behind us and bring in big crowds and followers on social media, which is going to be good. York City Knights have invested heavily over the last few years and with their brand new stadium and roster of international players, many are tipping them to do well this season. I caught up with Tamsin Renouf to find out all about the Knights' plans for victory. Hi Tamsin, lovely to meet you. So you were part of the Super 7 who all signed for York at the same time last year. How are things with the team? Um, yeah, um, I moved from Cass to York last year because um, my coach left Cass and moved to York and it was um, a really big opportunity for me and um, it's great at York and um, we've had a, quite a lot of new signings now and um, I'm very settled there, yeah, it's great. So York are obviously one of the teams that are expected to do really well. What do you think you can expect from this year? Um, yeah, obviously we've just narrowly missed out on the final. We lost by two points in the semis and I think that's given us a bit of a boost to want to push on in the Super League even more and I think we have got the talent to win these big games and give the, the top teams um, a lot of pressure and um, maybe ruffle with a few feathers. So, new big stadium, does it feel like home? Yeah, it's great playing at the stadium. We've played quite a few double headers now and it's been really good getting in with the men and like having big crowds as well. So we've been playing before the men at 12 and the men have been playing after us. So we've, by the end of our games, we've had nearly had like full capacity like with the men as well. So it's been really good to see that. So we've got the World Cup coming up at the end of the year. Does having the two semi-finals at York add an extra incentive to try and be part of the team? For me, it's not, it's not necessarily one of my main goals this year. I just want to go out and play consistently for York. And I think if that happens off the back of that, then um, so be it. But I think playing the best for my team is what I want to do this year. So this season, who are the players who you sort of admire across your team and across the league in general? Any woman who's played in the Super League is a great advert for the women's game because they work so hard. We all have full-time jobs as well, so absolutely anyone. But um, personally for me, um, Amy Arcasio plays for Saints. I play centre and I'm quite a few years younger than her. I think um, definitely in years to come, I want to be a player like her. And I think this year I can show um, myself against her as well. Um, so that'd be good. What do you think about the media surrounding women in particular, the, the hype about this season? I started playing in the Women's Super League nearly four years ago now and the um, growth of the game has been unreal. Like um, it being live on telly, like I played in a few broadcasted t games now and it's um, so much bigger and better than it ever was. Wigan Warriors are one of the most famous names in Rugby League and this season the Warrior women are aiming high. I caught up with Georgia Wilson and captain Rachel Thompson. Georgia, Rachel, great to see you. How excited are you for the upcoming season? I'm really excited and I think all the girls in the Super League are super excited to get started. Um, you know, the Challenge Cup has, has been before the Super League started, so I think for the girls that didn't get through to the semi-finals and finals, you know, they've had a few weeks off and they're raring to go now. So what are your club's biggest aims for this year, would you say? I think for us it's just um, about improving each week. You know, we've got a lot of inexperienced players um, and this will be a massive learning curve for them getting to play against these bigger teams, they'll, they'll definitely get a lot from it. So for us, it's just improving each week and making sure that we really build and, and learn a lot this season. So who do you think will be the team to beat this year? Well, obviously Saints have just won the <laughs> final, so probably Saints, York are looking pretty good and, and, and Leeds put up a good challenge as well. I think Huddersfield are doing really well, so all the top teams, it's going to be a big challenge every single week, yeah. yeah. So you kick off with the derby against Saints. What do you think we can expect from this clash? A lot of feistiness, you know. If the players that have played at Wigan for a long time, they understand what a big derby is all about. There's a few new girls in, so I've just got to like drill that in them this week at training, and what it means to be playing for Wigan in a big derby. But we're going to get on that pitch and, and play for the badge and yeah, give it our all. 
Show them what you're made of. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to all the women who took the time to chat to me today. What a day it's been. It's made me really excited for the upcoming season. I'm Christy McAllister and this is the Women's Rugby League Show. See you next time.